speakers. Before we take a close look around, let's boot up our iPad Pros to get them set up for the first time. Incidentally, the boot screen on the iPads match the bezel colors for each iPad. Now like the other iPads, the iPad Pro does incorporate Touch ID, which works with Apple Pay. The setup is a familiar process and you can skip this if you want and set it up later. The iPad Pro unfortunately does not pick up the lightning fast Touch ID 2 sensor from the newest iPhones. So taking a closer look at the iPad Pro, we are confronted with a truly massive 12.9 inch 4x3 LCD IPS display with a retina resolution of 2732 by 2048, which is good for 264 pixels per inch, making it the highest resolution display on any iOS device today, but with the same pixel density of the iPad Air 2. Now, like all recent iPads, the display is laminated to the glass with no visible distortion when pressed, although you can see the glass and display flexing if you press firmly. Along the back, you'll find no major design revolution here. It looks like all the current generation iPads with a rigid, all-aluminum unibody frame and a polished, color-matched Apple logo at the center, which is once again a standalone component and not etched into the metal. So again, nice attention to detail. At the opposite corner, we'll find a headphone jack with a color-matched insert. And at the bottom, we have a lightning connector, again with a color-matched insert insert and metal surround. On the cellular models, we'll find a nano SIM tray on the lower right side with an Apple SIM already included. This SIM can actually be used to activate a number of services, uh, so you don't need to purchase a specific SIM for each carrier, you can basically set this up under settings. The iPad Pro also features a radically different speaker design than previous iPads, with speakers at all four corners. The iPad actually has resonance chambers milled into the metal frame and covered with a carbon fiber cap. This creates a very dynamic soundscape and lower resonance, which creates a much fuller and immersive sound. The iPad can also adjust speaker output depending on orientation, which means the speakers always sound balanced. Now with these resonance chambers, there is a noticeable amount of vibration in the chassis, especially with the speakers at higher volumes. And if you're holding the iPad in landscape orientation, this means your palms are near these speakers, which can distort the audio even with another set of speakers to compensate. Audio does sound really impressive and it's certainly the best audio experience on any tablet today, but my only complaint is that audio sounds a bit distant or muffled and not as crisp and clear as a set of front-facing speakers. At the top, you'll find the venerable 1.2 megapixel FaceTime HD camera with an f2.2 aperture, which is good for 720p HD video. This is effectively the same camera we've had on recent iPads for a couple of years. Down below, we'll find our home button incorporating Touch ID, which is covered in sapphire glass and surrounded with a color-matched metal ring, which acts as a capacitive trigger for the Touch ID feature. In the upper corner, we'll find an 8-megapixel EyeSight camera flanked on either side by a set of dual microphones. The camera is also the same one we've seen for a few years now and is good for 1080p HD video with autofocusing and software stabilization. Along the top edge, we'll find the power sleep wake button and nearby we'll find a set of volume controls with a polished indent between them. Also unique to the iPad Pro is a new smart connector, which is a set of pins integrated into the side of the iPad, which can provide a data and power connection to accessories, such as the official Apple keyboard case or third-party cases like this Logitech case. This means accessories don't need to provide their own power and no Bluetooth connection is needed. It's all powered by the iPad through this connection. This is particularly nice for backlit keyboards like this Logitech keyboard which would otherwise have to be charged frequently in order to maintain that backlighting. 